Oh, come on, you old sod. Let him go and let's get home. I'll give him a few more minutes, Eric. So why are you in such a rush on this turnaround? Oh, some writer chap phoned late last night. Made me an offer I couldn't refuse. Anyone I should know? Famous like? Well, I've never heard of him. Jack Jessup, thriller writer. Looking for an inspirational week alone on the canals of northern England. You know, a book of sawdust mixed in with the aisle would quieten her down. Ah, tried that last time, didn't I? So how's it looking, then? You want the good news or the bad news? Oh, God. Come on, I'm a mechanic, not a bleeding magician. The big ends are shot inside of rings. Basically, it's knackered. Needs a whole new lump. Cylinder. Yep. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, of course I will. Thomas, please! Not in those filthy overalls. Oh. Is it all right? Well, yeah, it's running, after a fashion. Knew you could do it. Well, there's no guarantee how long it's going to continue to run. Could be a week, but on the other yeah. end. How much? 3,600? Is that the trade price? Yeah, of course I'm trade. Saturday. Saturday staff only have half a brain. Oh, I'm knackered. I'm also starving, as it happens. Oh, terrific. The larder is bare. Yeah, look, I haven't had time to do the shopping yet, yeah? Wonderful, Mum. Mm -hmm. Oh, work all hours. 2,723. Come in, knackered, starving. What's in the fridge? And is that with FA, full trade discount, fridge. is it? Well, okay, fine. Yeah, well, look, I'll, I'll let oh, you know soon. Thanks very much. Dear. Okay, right, bye. Right Listen, you! I can't do everything, you know. I don't just wave a magic wand and the fridge fills up. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, don't worry about me. I'll just pop down the pub and have a nice lump of cold pork pie. In the meantime, I'll nibble on me nails to keep myself going. Oh, you... you sod! Have you taken your pills, Dad? Dad? Will you stop fussing, girl? You think you ought to take your pills? You know what the doctor said? A bugger you and the doctor. That young kid knows note, doesn't know his arse from his elbow. What is like? You can't force him. What? What's that you're saying? I'm not deaf, you know. I can hear you. I was just saying to Eric, our Sally said she'd see us later. What about else, Sally? Yeah, said we'd meet her for a drink later. Be nice that, eh, Dad? Uh, hey, we're not meeting in that pit of a place you call a pub, are we? <laughs> Hi, Jack Jessup. So you're Jack the Thriller. <laughs> Sal? Sally's here. He's just arrived. He being who? The writer bloke, Jack Jessup. Oh, God, he's early. All right, I'll be out in just a couple of minutes. No, don't worry about it. I'll sign him up, show him around the boat. Please, paperwork. What's he like, then? Oh, he's, uh, all right. Find the keys. Keys. Don't you worry about a thing. I'll sort him out. Whoops, Daisy. If you must know, he's very tasty. Very, very tasty as it happens. I always knew that girl had taste. Hmm. And talking of taste. I'd like to show you a whole new experience in life. Um, I thought you were going to go and see Lively's contact about the new engine. Mm -mm. 
I phoned him while you were in the shower. We're going to see him first thing in the morning. So, first a new experience, and then I'm going to take you out for a drink, which you will no doubt need. Do you know something? When you get your priorities right, life takes on a whole new dimension. Mm, I realise this. Mm. Better hurry and get dressed, Thomas. Hey? Eh? No, I thought... Shh, shh, shh. I... Trust me. You've got to be joking. Promised you a new experience. Now listen, sweetheart, there are some experiences I can well do without. And this is one of them. Do without this one, Sunshine, and I promise you, you'll miss out on a whole lot of others. That is blackmail. The very best kind. Come on, sooner we get started. Listen, sweetheart, listen. Look, I can't do this. I mean, I'm a... Oh, I'm a ma... Excuse me? Mechanic. Oh, I see. And mechanics don't need coffee, eggs, milk, butter. Blue rolls, toothpaste, washing up liquid. I'll get the trolley. It's fine. I don't know about this young one. Oh, it's only the day lend lock. Oh, come on, he's all right. Anyhow, I'm a big girl now. No, sure, that's what has me worried. Yeah, well, don't worry, I'll be all right. Pick us up at day lend lock about six. I'll see you later. Bye. Ball. My mum used to give me that. I love the old tapioca. Big dollop of raspberry jam. Oops, clumsy. Hope you don't mind, old grey people. Old grey? You're not that old and you've only got a grey hair in your head. <laughs> I'm probably old enough to be your father. Get away. Besides, I like the older man. Preferably one that can make a proper cup of tea. It tastes like piss, Jack. <laughs> Flipping daylight robbery, that. Welcome to the real world. Smart ass. Here, you promised me a beer. And a beer you'll get. I'm taking you to a nice country pub, actually. Oh, terrific. <sighs> Hold on, I don't trust you. There's got to be a snag. Snag? I really don't know what you mean. Well, what's wrong with our own local boozer? I just thought a trip out to a country pub would make a change, that's all. Yeah? Yeah, why not? Let's go for it. Give you a chance to meet Pam and Eric. Who? Look, while you were in the shower earlier, I had a phone call from my cousin oh, Pam. don't tell <laughs> me. She's a very nice person. I knew there'd be a snack. Listen, I don't want to spend my Saturday afternoon meeting your ancestors. <sighs> Look, I promised that we'd meet them for a drink. It won't take more than an hour or so. And anyway, from what Pam said, it just might be my last chance to see me Uncle Horace. Uncle Horace? Oh, this gets better by the minute, doesn't it? Hello, Uncle Horace. Oh, spare me, will you? Uncle Horace is a lovely old man who just happens to be dying, Thomas. Are you married? God, no. Why'd you ask? Just interested. Good-looking bloke like you. It's pretty rare, you know. <laughs> what are you, Pippa? You married or involved? Free as a bird. Pure in body. Not quite so in thought. <laughs> <laughs> You're just the tonic I need. Because it stands to reason, that's why. Look, look, sorry, it's a fact that I know more about engines than you, right? It is also a fact that I've had more dealings with duckers and divers like this Teddy McGill bloke. I can duck and dive and wheel and deal when I have to, you know. Oh. And as for engines, well, what's there to know? It's a Lister three-cylinder thingy. Thingy? Oh, an expert, eh? You just can't bear the thought of me being able to close down a deal without your help, can you? You must be very insecure or something. Yeah, with the edge up. 
You crack me up at times, you really do. Do you know that? Yeah, your brake lights ain't working. Uh, Uncle Horace? Uncle Horace? It's Sally. Sally? Not off, Sally. Yeah. Oh, it's lovely to see you. How are you? What are you doing, sitting out here all alone? I'm sitting out here all alone cos I don't want to sit in there with all them cardboard cutouts that pass for folk around these parts. Pam and Eric in there. Ah, uh, talking to arty-farty friends. Damn me crackers they do, all of them. <laughs> hey, who's this, then? Oh, uh, Thomas. This is me Uncle Horace. Horace, how are you, Cocker? Oh, bloody southerner. Did they say how long, Pam? Well, any time, I'm afraid. The doctors are a little surprised that he's still with us. So you don't like football, then? No, I find all sports boring. Oh, terrific. Is there nothing that can be done? Oh, no, no. Like I said, it's just a matter of time. Oh, it's not been easy, Sal. He gets worse by the day. Oh, bloody cantankerous and bull-headed, Sally. I don't know what you do from him. He always moans. You're driving us potty, actually. Oh, Eric. Come on, Pam. Bloody bonkers. Well, is there anything I can do? No, not really. I just thought I ought to phone and let you know the situation. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you did. Oh, poor Uncle Horace. No news of Glenn Miller, then? Sorry? Nothing. No. Right, uh, who's ready for another? Tom? Uh, no, thanks. No, I'm all right. Um, and my name's not Tom, it's Thomas. Oh, right. Uh, Sally, Pam. Oh, uh, no, thanks very much, Eric. You sure, Tom? Yeah, I'm positive, thanks. Ern. My name's not Ern, Tom, it's Eric. Sally. I think I'd better pop outside for a minute. Yeah. I, uh, I won't be long. No. Nothing. He seems like a nice enough chap. Hmm. Not very good with names, though. <clears throat> How's it going, then? How's what going? Well, life, you know, things in general. Why, well, what's it to you? Suit yourself. Nasty old chest on you, ain't you? Got a cold or something? <coughs> cold? <laughs> Never had a cold in his life. <coughs> Thirty years down pit and... Naughty booker. I'm just trying to be friendly, that's all. Listen, if you don't like the company out here, you can always go in there and mix nicely with all Yorkshire folk, can't you? I'm fine out here, Tar, very much. Find a bitter. Well, you do drink bitter, don't you? Happen I might. How did you know? Well, all Yorkshiremen drink pints of bitter, think they can play cricket and spit nails, don't they? You're taking a piss, lad. Of course I am. Pint of bitter, eh? One pint of bitter coming up. Don't run off. In a telephone box? Yeah. It was only a day old. I spent most of my life in council care, foster parents, that sort of thing. And you poor thing. Well, I was all right, really. Didn't know any different. Well, what about you then? I mean, I know you're not married or anything, but is there anyone special? Um, some wine. I have a few bottles of a very special wine. I'd drink battery acid if you were offering it, Jack the Thriller. <laughs> Long enough. Uh. <sighs> it's like horse piss round here, but it's better than note. Is that not drinking, lad? Yeah, yeah. Uh, excuse me, love. Can I have a pint of bitter, please? 
Look, I know it's Saturday afternoon, but please take it easy. That's the third night you've had in as many minutes. No. Now, I'm... behave yourself. <laughs> Don't know what about birds, lad. Well, uh, yeah, I've had me moments, yeah. Yeah. They're back home now, they will. They're roosting on coop waiting for us. Oh, pigeons, you mean? Ah, pigeons. Yeah. Are you all right, Dad? Dad? You've not been drinking. Has he been drinking? Have you been buying him drinks? Well, yeah, we had a couple of pints, didn't we, Horace? You did what? Uh, don't, don't show me up, love. He's a sick man. He's not supposed to be drinking. Well, I didn't know that. We just had a couple of pints, a bit of a laugh. Eyes, and... you? Surely common sense would have told you that. All right, all right. You made your point. Now keep the volume down, Don't will you? Don't you tell me to be quiet. Sam, what's going on, love? This bloody idiot has been buying Dad pints of beer, would you believe? Oh, he have a day off. It weren't his fault, love. Stay out of this, Dad. It's not supposed to drink. It's on drugs, for God's sake. Thomas wasn't to know that. It's not really any excuse, Sally. Tom was with us when Pam was explaining to you. Now, hold your horses, will you? Now, I've asked you once, politely, right? Now I'm telling you, shut your trap. And you... If you call me Tom or Tommy one more time, I'm going to separate you from your breath. Have you got that, Eric? Right, that's it. Come on, we're leaving. Get our things, please. Move yourself, Eric. Don't you worry, Horace. I'll buy you a pint any time you want, mate. And you bloody well stay away from him. Poor sod. Well, you certainly impressed them, Thomas. Yeah, I'm doing just uh, thinking of poor old Uncle Horris. They treat him like a baby. They're nice people, really, and uh, it must be very hard for them if you think about it. I mean, they can't go anywhere or do anything without taking Uncle Horris. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know it ain't easy, Sal, but they don't have to treat him like that, do they? I mean, if he really is on his last knockings, I'd let him do anything he wants. What, even if it kills him, you mean? Oh, well, yeah. It's better going out on the high note, isn't it? Now, if he were my dad, I'd... Oh, I don't know, I'll just get the ump thinking about someone like Horace being treated like that, that's all. Um, you were about to say something about your dad. You've never said anything about your family, you know? Not one thing. Yeah, well, there's nothing to say, really. Bit of music! Yes, yeah. Look, I'll ring you back in about five minutes. Yeah. Uh, five minutes. Right. Come on, come on, my beauty. Come on, there, she knows, don't you? <laughs> Horace? Oi, Horace! No, 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 over here, daft old sword, it's me. I oh, think it's you. What the hell are you doing here? Dad, we're just popping off to church. Will you be all right for an hour or so? Of course I'll be all right. Are you sure? Dad? I just bloody well said, didn't I? 
All clear. Aye, all clear. <laughs> what the hell are you doing here? She'll go do a lolly if she sees you. Want to go scrappy? <laughs> oh, not half. <laughs> I should never have let her go, never. Lively, I know how worried you are, but you must understand, Pippa's a big girl now. She's above the age of consent. What? No, 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 and if she wants to stay out all night, then she can. But she never did it before, never. Listen, I bet you that by the time we get this engine business sorted out, we'll get back home and she'll be sitting there with a big smug grin on her chops. Well, I pray to Christ you're right, Sally. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Somebody bloody answer. You know, last Cockney I knew, we're back at war. Jim Higgins was his name. Right fly bugger and all, as I remember. Still, he weren't a bad bloke for a southerner. Oh, don't go getting all sentimental on me, Horace. Oh, he was still a big soft Nelly, like all you lot from down south. <laughs> no, he weren't a bad bloke. He was better than that uh, Alf Norbert. Oh, he was a right prat, he were. Mind you, he came from Nottingham. Nottingham? Ah, uh, you can't trust them from Nottinghamshire, you know. Oh, look, man, he's nice. All Brian Clough and all that mob, isn't it? Yeah. Jack! I'm back! I've been ringing and ringing and there's just no... What's up, Jack? Nothing, Pippin. Roger. What have I been pulling out fish and pushing you up here? <laughs> what do you reckon then? I reckon that daughter of mine will swing for both of us when she finds out. Yeah. <laughs> Best not push our luck, eh? Oh, let's let's not be too hasty, Thomas. Let's at least think this thing through. What? Let's think about it over a pint or three, eh? Yeah. Ten years we've been together. Ten years flushed down the pan for one night of madness. God, what a waste. Oh, you ain't gonna cry, are you? Can't bear to see a grown man cry. Oh, God, why am I telling you all my troubles? I've only known you a few hours. I won't worry about it. Everyone's always telling me their troubles. I'm the Claire Rayner of the Leeds to Liverpool Canal. Oh, so you had a crafty leg over and you got caught. So what? It's not the end of the world. Worst things happen at sea. You're wonderful, you know, Pippa. Yeah, I know. It's not just the ten years. I mean, that's bad enough. I've also destroyed the trust of a lifelong friend. The boyfriend is... threatened to find me and kill me. My customers looked as good as you, lady. Don't let how I look fool you, Teddy. Oh, oh I won't. <laughs> and I won't be taken in by the flutter of a pair of pretty eyes, either. I'll tell you what. I won't flutter my eyes just so long as you don't try me on with any bullshit, OK? <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> two grand. Take it or leave it. Two grand's too much, Teddy. Don't take me for a wilf. I said take it or leave it. Well then, I'll leave it. Half your time, see you around. 1800. And that's my last. 1600 sounds better. No, I never knew my dad. He ran off with the midwife who delivered me. No. Nah. Yeah, straight up, yeah. <laughs> My mum, she died. God blame it's 15 years ago now. I know the family then. Yeah, yeah, I've got, I've got a half brother. 
He's three years younger than me. He jumped ship in Cape Town. Still there, apparently. Yeah, we never got on. Funny, that. I never really got on with my brother, either. Sally's dad. No? Ooh, rumbugger he were. Hey, silly. What I wouldn't give for a day's fishing. I used to love to go fishing when I was able. What do you mean, when you were able? I'd have to spell it out for you. Can't go fishing, because I spend most of my time in this bloody contraption, sitting outside shops with tied up dogs and screaming kids in prams. Why can't you go fishing? Because no bugger will take me, that's why. Oh. Are you sure you won't come with us? No, no, I'll wait with the boat, get on with some work. Good idea. I should only be gone about an hour and a half. I'm well, not going anywhere. Thanks, Pippa. No problem, Jack. It's all part of the service. <laughs> you bloody man! <laughs> Look, where you going, you idiot? Bloody hell, I'm not going to go. I'm not I'll bring you, lad. Bloody no, the... Thomas! Where you been, then? I've been waiting for you. You southern git. <laughs> I'll knock your block off. <laughs> should have been back by now. Yeah, you got me worried now, but I'm not sure what we should do. Morning, up. Where have you been? There and back, see how far it is. If you remember, Thomas, I needed my car this morning to go and do a deal. Ah, you were only going a mile or so up the road. What's the problem? What's the problem? I just don't believe you sometimes. I wake up this morning to find that you've sneaked out without telling me where you're going, and on top of that, you take my car! No, look, excuse no, you me. stay out of this, will you? I'll tell you what. Why don't you put a little book at the door and then I can log in and out for you? Creep, that's not fair. Now listen, you That's not fair, and you know it. I've only been gone three hours. I don't care. That's not the point. Well, what is the point then? All this fuss over a few hours? Don't you think you could have at least told me you were going out? That at the very least. I didn't know myself till first thing this morning. It was an impulse thing. Anyway, you were fast to kip. You could have woken me up. You sure? You know what you're like when you're woken up? That's rich, isn't it? Coming from the king of the early morning. Well, you stop up, you bloody roll! Pippa's missing, and all the two of you can do is argue and bicker about nothing at all. What do you mean, Pippa's missing? I mean missing, as in missing. She's not here, and she hasn't been seen since she left here yesterday afternoon with that Jessup bloke. Walter! Jesus! Walter! <laughs> All the rest are dead. Indians. <laughs> Red. What? Village. What's he done to her? I murder him. Lively, I think you'll find. She's raving, so she is. Where the bloody hell have you been? I've been ringing and ringing down pub, I suppose. <sighs> What's up with him? He's been worried stick about you, Pippa. That's what's wrong with him. Big daft apeth. Excuse me. Could anyone tell me where I could find a Mr. Jack Jessup? I thought you were asleep. I were. You still got Cobham with us, lass? Not anymore. I've not seen you look so happy in a long while. Had a gun time. He's a good lad, is that, Thomas? Well, I think he's a bad influence on you. All that drinking and excitement, it's too much for you. I enjoyed myself. I want to do things. I just... 
just don't want you getting overexcited. Do you know what the doctor said? Uh, I know what he said. I know what's what, lass. Right, well, um, shush up you and get some rest. He's taking me fishing, you know, he's Thomas. Fire, I'm looking forward to it all. Fishing. <laughs> None of our business, Pippa. We shouldn't get involved. Oh, that's great. That's just great, that is. You know, if this bloke finds Jack, he's gonna kill him. I think you're being just a little melodramatic. Listen, you two, it's Sunday afternoon, right? Now, instead of putting my feet up and having a few jars, I've got to load that dinghy, get up river, and start grafting. So can we just hurry up? Yeah, well, I'm coming with you. Pippa. I want to sell. <sighs> It's up to you, but I think it would be a good idea if you went and had a word with Lively first, OK? Yeah, but just get on with it, all right? I want to get cogging. <sighs> Did I ever tell you... my dad... <laughs> he had it away on his toes with the midwife who delivered me. Uh, no, I... I don't think you ever did. Is it true? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what my mum told me, you know. Listen, I'm sorry about sneaking off this morning and, and my attitude Shh. when I got... so much. Fine. Fine. I won't worry anymore. Look, I'm gonna go back up river with Thomas in the dinghy. If he can't fix the engine tonight, then I'll probably stay over again. Keep Jack company. Okay. Look, as long as I know you're all right, that's fine. I just don't want you to get hurt, young man. That's all. Oh, you big soft mop. Sixteen hundred and he delivers. I think that's a good deal, don't you? Yeah, 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 clever clogs. Quite chuffed with yourself, aren't you? Just a bit. Yes. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Oh, look, I'm sorry, Cocker. We don't want to get involved, all right? We told you already. Look, if you won't take me to him or well, tell me where I can find him, perhaps you could give him a message for me? Yeah, fair enough, yeah. Well, uh, provided it isn't a threat of any kind. Uh, please, just tell Jack that I'm here. My name's Christopher. All I want to do is talk. I've booked myself into a hotel up the road called the Regal. Oh, yeah, I know it, yeah. Is that it, then? Tell him all is forgiven. All I want to do is talk to him. That's it. All right, then. I'll be on me boat. <laughs> oh, uh, Lively, uh, in that Aladdin's cave of yours, you got any fishing rods and stuff like that? Has Pinocchio got a wooden what's it? <laughs> Fishing rods? You? Oh, move, you son. Oh, you cow son. How's it going, then? It ain't. Seized up solid. Yeah. Oh. Does that mean the boat's going to be here all night? Well, we can't tie it now, can we? Look, it's going to get dark in an hour or so. Mm. What's that? Earl Grey. All very posh here, you know. Yeah? Uh, have you given Jack that message from the other bloke yet? No, oh, no, I haven't had time. I'll tell him along with the bad news. No, no, it's all right. I'll do it. Pippa, you sure you know what you're doing? Please, Thomas. He 
Evening, sir. Good evening. There you go. Oh, great. Ah, proper cup of tea at last. Just when I think I know you, you go off and do something that proves me wrong. Do what? Run that by me again. This morning's disappearing act. Why didn't you tell me? Oh, that. Well, I don't know, really. Who did tell you, by the way? Pam phoned about an hour ago. Yeah, that purse-lipped old cow. <sighs> she said she'd rather you didn't take Uncle Horace fishing tomorrow. Do what? What does she mean, she don't want me to take him fishing? That is not what she said. All she said was is that she's a little concerned about it. Why? I mean, what is there to be concerned about, eh? All right, if I was taking him temping bowling or disco dancing, I could understand it. You're concerned about your daughter's well-being, Mr. Lively, is that it? Well, Pippa is not exactly my daughter, but close enough. I am concerned, yes. You see, I don't know the first thing about this Jack Jessup fella. That's why I came to see you, I see. Well, the first thing you ought to know about Jack is that he wouldn't harm a fly. He's one of the gentlest, kindest people you could ever wish to meet. Are you sure? Oh, I'm very sure, Mr. Lively. And you can also be assured that the young lady's virtue couldn't be in safer hands. I don't know how you can be so sure about that, Christopher. I know Pippa is a tomboy at times, but when all is said and done, she has all the right equipment to stir the lines of any red-blooded male. Played hard to get and won. I fancy you like mad, Jack. Stop it! I can't, Jack. I want you. Stop it! You don't understand. This is crazy. I've been crazy about you since yesterday, Jack. God, Pippa, no. What's up, Jack? Are they that bad? Silly, isn't it? No. No, it isn't. Not when you really think about it. God, he's going to be so gutted when Pam tells him he... Oh, no, I can't stop thinking about it. Oh, don't worry. He'll be all right. I'll tell you what. Why don't you call him tomorrow? Talk to him yourself. Yeah, that's a good idea, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think I'll do that. Yeah, he'd like that, wouldn't he? Yeah. Oh, come on, get some sleep. I've only known the old son a couple of days, isn't it? I feel so close to him. That sounds soppy. No, it doesn't. It's a couple of days more than you knew your own father. Do you know something, Mrs. H? At times, you can be a right smart ass. I'm sorry, Pippa. I'm highly flattered, believe me, but you must try to understand. Let's just forget it, eh? It just wouldn't work. Besides which... I said forget it. I want us to be friends. I like you. I want you as a friend. All right, we're friends, right? Sure. Look, I don't just go flashing me tits off for anyone, you know. Ahem. I don't think things worked out quite as Pippa planned. No, she don't look too happy with herself, does she? Oh, no, she wouldn't. <laughs> I take it you know something we don't, Lively? Aye, that I do. It's quite all world sometimes, isn't it? 
Funny old life. Um. Well, don't look at me. I haven't got a clue. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. God, what a waste. Would you like to come shopping with us, Dad? Eh? Look, I'm sorry, lover. I know how much you were looking forward to the fishing trip, but you must realise that you're just not up to it. Just... Just book her off and leave it be. Jessup, and our apologies for all the troubles. No need for apologies. Thanks again, Sally. Bye. Bye. Let him go, young one. Look, I'm a big girl now, and I don't give up without a fight. I know, and I've always admired that quality in you, but I think you'd better just hold your horses and listen. Look, I only want to talk to him. I, uh... I think you'd better listen to what Lively's trying to tell you. Yeah, well, you see, your friend Jack the Thriller and his friend Chris, well, well, they're very good friends, you see? Yeah, I know they're the... mates. Uh, yeah, but they're very good mates. Yeah, very, very good mates. Like, well, mates as in, um, you know... <sighs> you don't mean... No, you're winding me up. I wonder he didn't like looking at me tits. <clears throat> oh, yeah, well, well, I'm gasping for a good cup of tea. Roger, Lively, you got that fishing gear for us? Yeah, yeah. Thomas? Can I borrow the car, please? I knew that wouldn't. <laughs> it took you bloody long if you're caught in a git. Now don't start or I'll let the air out your tyres. Everything's there, lady. It's brand spanking new. OK, come into the office. I bet you the first round of beer that I get the first fish of the day. Ah, uh, <coughs> you've not, no chance. <coughs> no chance at all. <coughs> Come on, sunshine, cough it up. Might get a gold watch. <laughs> <laughs> You all right? Hey? Oh, yeah, fine talk. Um, so... You'll get over him, you know. Who? Jack the Thriller. Oh, him? Yeah, I know. Oh, already over him. Well, good for you. Uh, so, I think you'd better have a look at this. What? I don't know. Can't make it out. Made in... Korea? It says Lister made in England on the top <gasps> cover. Oh, no! I think, oh, yeah. We bought mutton dressed up as lamb. Bloody murder him! Lively! This is the life, eh? Ah, this is the life. <coughs> it's grand. <coughs> no, 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 you daft bugger. What are you doing? I want to get it out Do of it there. like I just showed oh, you. All right, don't get Larry with me, pal. Look, it's dead easy, you cockney git. Cockney? Listen, you great Yorkshire pudding. All I've got to do is whip off that handbrake and up Rod Horris. Blosh, in the briny toot sweet. Yeah, I'll show you hot rod Horace in a minute when I get that the first fish oh, out. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah? Yeah. Okay, well, cop hold of this, son. I'll show you how it's done. Look at that. That's... Ouch! Ha 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 you big soft nelly! Oh. No, I did warn you. He's as tricky as a cat of monkeys. I'll give him tricky when I get my hands on him. Ah. We meet again so soon. Yes. I don't remember inviting you in, lady. You conned me. I want my money back and that cheap load of old rubbish off my property like now. Your money back? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, but we don't do refunds or take back goods either, lady. Oh, is that right? That's right. And what's your problem? You've got a perfectly good engine for the money you spent. Yeah, but it wasn't the engine I ordered, and you bloody well know that, dickhead. <gasps> Danny, Robbo, we've got a mouthy one. Maybe we should have a rethink about this. My complaints, manager. You find them very helpful. Ah, oh, well, the thing is, Sally and me are just sort of happy as we are, you know. Don't talk about the future, really. Not in any great detail. Uh, who knows what tomorrow brings, eh? <laughs> Hold up. There you go, cop. What's up? You wanted me up? Thomas. Oh. Let my birds fly. Yeah, you sit down, mate. I don't know what you're looking at. It's... Thomas? Oh, Chris, mate. And it would have been sad if he popped off outside Safeways with a load of dogs and screaming kids in prams. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I usually am, actually. Oh. Excuse me, Mr. Modest. Well, I was right about you not knowing enough about engines, wasn't I? And how to deal with duckers and divers like that McGill bloke. That is below the belt. And besides, the list price of that engine was £1,800, so I still saved us 200 on the deal. It was £1,800 retail. We are trained. For a fight, Thomas Jin. Fight? Mate, no, I'm going to need all my energy to fit that Korean crap you're lumbering with. What's your game? You want something? Hey, hey, come on, 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 come